Hello, everybody. Time now for my college football picks for the week of November 14th, 2015. And every week, I pick college football games nationwide, including all the Big 12 games, with the exception of the OU game, against the spread. And I go against the almighty coin. Now, the five-cent piece, the nickel, well, it's decided to increase its artillery. So, it doubled its strength. So, this week, it's a dime. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to go against the dime this week instead of nickel. But before me and the 10-cent piece pick games, let's review how I did last week. Well, you know, there's an old saying, some days you're the dog and some days you're the fire hydrant. And I was the latter last week. Yeah, I only won four out of 11 games. Four and seven against the spread, while the nickel did much better. Seven, four against the spread. So, entering this week, my lead has been reduced to six. I'm at 58, 52, and seven against the spread. While the nickel is at 52, 58, 7. On with the picks. Okay, now we're ready for the picks. And we'll start in the Big 12. Oklahoma at Baylor, of course, for my pick on this game. And my thoughts, check out the weekly matchup show on this very page. Oklahoma State at Iowa State. The Cowboys 9-0 and and riding high after their 20-point win against previously unbeaten TCU. You might be thinking, well, how's the Cowboys? How are they going to be motivated to play an Iowa State team that's below 500 and has a very bad pass defense? I think Mike Gundy could use one thing, at least one thing, to get the Cowboys' attention. Of course, the game four years ago where the Cowboys were undefeated and they lost in overtime to the Cyclones. But looking at the present, how about this? Oklahoma State only moved up to number eight in the college football playoff rankings. Some, including yours truly, thought they would have been higher. So maybe Oklahoma State shows the uh, committee, hey, we're better than number eight in the country. Give me the Cowboys minus 13 and a half. If the dime lands on heads, likes the favorite, tails, it's going with the underdog. And the dime this week is going to take, going to take Iowa State. Kansas at TCU. Yes, speaking of the Horned Frogs, first loss of the season. They're a 44-point favorite at home. I know TCU, you know, I know that they're not undefeated anymore, and I know they're wide receiver, Josh Doxson. There's injury issues there. However, you're playing Kansas, and Kansas hasn't won a game all year. And Kansas, you know, they don't cover spreads either. So give me TCU at home minus the 44, and the coin is going to take Kansas. You got Texas at West Virginia. A couple of teams, you know, trying to get to bowl eligibility. Texas has to win two of their last three to get there. And West Virginia, um, not quite there yet as far as bowl eligibility. But they are at home. But it's a different team at home than they are away from Morgantown this season. West Virginia, minus the eight. Yeah, I'm taking the Mountaineers. Give me West Virginia, minus the eight points. And the coin is going to go with West Virginia. Kansas State at Texas Tech. Speaking of bowl eligibility, you know, the Red Raiders look like they were well on their way there, but they have been, uh, you know, cement um, as far as uh, the win total goes. Five wins. They need to get one more. I think they get the job done against a K State team that this is the worst Wildcat team we've seen since Bill Snyder's first year there. Give me uh, Texas Tech minus the five and a half, and the coin is going to take Kansas State. Moving on nationally, Alabama at Mississippi State. The Tide showed why they were one of the best teams in the country as they stopped Leonard Fournette dead in his tracks, and they were impressive in prime time on Saturday against LSU. But now you got to get motivated to play on the road against a Mississippi State team that's better than what a lot of people might realize. Mississippi State's only lost two games this year, both on the road, and one of those losses was a two-pointer at LSU. Mississippi State might have the best QB in the conference in Dak Prescott. So this will be a hard game for Bama to not only get up for, but a hard game to play because Mississippi State can play. I think Bama wins, but I think it's a nail-biter. Mississippi State, I'll take the Bulldogs plus the seven, and the coin is going to go with Alabama. Florida at South Carolina. The Gators did not look good at all last week, at least offensively they didn't, against Vanderbilt. Now you go on the road against South Carolina, whom I don't think is too terrible of a team. Florida is getting um, giving 7.5 points in this game. I think defensively, Florida will probably have enough to win. Offensively, I don't think they have enough arsenal uh, to win comfortably. So give me South Carolina plus the 7.5, and, and the coin is going to go uh, with South Carolina too. 
You have Arkansas and LSU, the Tigers. Boy, it, will, will they come into this game um, with a rebound after that loss against Alabama, or will it be a hangover? Will it be a hangover, meaning that they didn't get over that Alabama defeat? I think it's going to be the former. I think Les Miles will have these guys ready. They're at home. Arkansas, they've played a little bit better lately. Of course, an improbable win at Ole Miss, but Arkansas is going to need more uh, than a desperation play to win in this one. So give me LSU minus 8.5, and, and the coin is going to go with Arkansas. Now, moving on, Memphis at Houston. We bring this game up because, you know, both these teams play in a group of five conference, uh, American Athletic Conference. And remember that of all the group of five conference champions, the one that's ranked highest in the college football playoff ranking at the end of the year gets a major bowl bid. So this is an important game. Memphis lost to Navy. Houston still undefeated. Houston knows they got three big games coming up with this one, plus Navy November 27th at home, and possibly the AAC championship against Temple. So I think Houston knows what's on the line, and Memphis don't know how they're going to bounce back after not only losing the Navy, but Navy pretty much ran all over them. Give me Houston minus the six, and the coin is going to go with Houston too. Let's move on to the Big Ten. You got Ohio State at Illinois, and it looks like JT Barrett will be back. It seems like they're so much better offensively with him than Cardell Jones. And both are real good quarterbacks, but it just seems like the offense puts a little bit more with Barrett in there. He comes back after the one-game suspension. Yeah, Barrett's stupid for uh, driving under the influence. But hopefully he's learned his lesson. Ohio State um, should be there this week with him on the field. Give me the Buckeyes minus the 17 at Illinois. And the coin is going to take Ohio State. Ohio State, of course, plays Michigan State pretty soon. Michigan State hosting Maryland. And don't know if you watch the Michigan State game, but yeah, the Spartans, they got hosed at Lincoln, Nebraska. But then again, if Michigan State had played their brand of football, shouldn't even come down to that play, okay? I think Michigan State will bounce back in a big way, knowing that, you know, they still have a shot at the Big Ten Championship if they can uh, run the table. And Maryland, yeah, I'm not too secure about the Terrapins. So given Michigan State at home minus the 18, with, of course, Ohio State looming ahead. Spartans minus the 18, and the coin is going to take Michigan State, too. Tigers minus 26 and a half. I don't know how you can be motivated to play at Syracuse the week after you just won your biggest conference game of the year against Florida State. you got to go to the Carrier Dome to play the Orange. Clemson, yeah, they'll have enough talent to win, but emotionally, I don't know how jacked up, if they're going to be jacked up, really, to be ready to play this game. Clemson to win, but Syracuse to cover. Give me the orange minus the 26 and a half. And the coin, by the way, is going to go with Clemson. Two more games. Both Pac-12, Oregon at Stanford. Beginning of the year, we thought this was going to be a big game. Instead, it's big for only one team, and that's Stanford, because if they run the table, meaning they can win out, beat Notre Dame at the end of the year, and win the Pac-12 championship, Pretty good chance that Stanford will grab a college football playoff spot, so they know what's on the line. Oregon, yeah, this team um, didn't quite hit expectations, and that's an understatement. So give me Stanford at home, or two physical, minus the eight and a half, and the coin is going to go uh, with Oregon. And finally, I promise finally, Utah at Arizona. And I can't believe it. Utah's actually favored on the road. You know, despite the fact that, you know, They've been ranked against non-ranked teams at the time they played them. They were underdogs in both games. Of course, USC, they lost. But last week, they were underdog to Washington, and Utah won. I think Utah keeps the winning going. Of course, Utah trying to get that bid for the Pac-12 South. They're going to need a little help. They have to have USC lose. But I think Utah will try to do everything on their end. I guess the Arizona team has been disappointing this year, one of the biggest disappointments. Give me Utah in Tucson, uh, minus the five, and the coin is going to agree it likes Utah as well. So those are my picks. What were yours? A reminder, my post game of Oklahoma at Baylor, uh, more than likely is going to be early Sunday. Might be late Saturday, but uh, don't hold your breath on that. But we will have a post game uh, soon after the Oklahoma and Baylor game. Go Sooners. Thanks for watching my college football picks with me and the replacement this week for the nickel, the dime. All right, thanks.
you later.